Hey everyone, and welcome to the Marvel Snap Decks of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta decks to help you climb ranks in Marvel Snap. If you'd like to support the series, press the like button. It's basically free and it's all that YouTube cares about. Let's get started with Sinister Kazoo, which is our first deck of this week. Now, I've been trying to find ways to modify and improve on the zoo style mechanics of Marvel Snap, and until they really change Pool 1 or modify in any way, zoo decks will be pretty much solid in, in uh, Pool 1. So, finding ways to improve on them can be difficult, but I think I have in Mr. Sinister. Now, Mr. Sinister is a 2 cost 2 that re that also replicates himself, so he's really a 2 cost 4 that actually utilizes two different spots on the board. Obviously, he works really well with Ant-Man, but moreover, he works really well with Blue Marvel and the consequent Onslaught because they're going to be getting buffed quite significantly. Obviously, Captain America and Wolfsbane also rely on utilizing uh, Mr. Sinister to some good effectiveness. Uh, Mr. Sinister works very poorly with Angela, so they'll want to be in separate lanes. However, what's worth noting here is I think that overall, having an additional target that allows you to target someone with Blue Marvel in Mr. Sinister is actually really beneficial. Uh, you really want to fill your board here, and that's kind of the purpose of this deck. Moreover, as you start to move into Pool 2, Mr. Sinister is immune to Killmonger, which of course is very valuable as well. The way these decks are generally played is you run the Angela in a single lane, you pop the uh, the Nightcrawler on top of Angela, move the Nightcrawler out, and feed more cards into Angela in order to ramp her up. Eventually, you want to have Ant-Man with uh, three others in the lane, one of which has to be armor to protect from destroy effects from the likes of, say, Killmonger as you enter Pool 2. You want to finish lanes with Wolfsbane, she has a huge burst of power, and then finally, and this could be one of the more trickier elements of uh, piloting this deck, you have to keep in mind that when you use Squirrel Girl, the squirrels occupy parts of the uh, the locations. So realistically, you play Squirrel Girl, you only have three available slots in any given location. And one of the locations has to be left open with only one squirrel, because you have to play Kazar, you have to play Blue Marvel, and you have to play Onslaught into that single location for a total of four. Because the Onslaught, which doubles the ongoing effects, is going to impact both Blue Marvel and of course, Kazar. And that's how you get the most value out of this deck. Based on the comment section, I see a lot of positivity around ongoing decks. They seem to be ones that people really enjoy playing. So I have a pool one ongoing combo list here that I think has a very high win rate that you're gonna find a lot of success with. It can be a little challenging to pilot as a new player, but the advantage to this is it has multiple win conditions depending on your board state. And I'll start with that. Usually we start at the one, now we're starting at the sixes. So you actually have two win conditions here. The first is the burst from Spectrum. Spectrum gives all your ongoing cards plus two power and as you'll notice with this list everything is an ongoing card with the exception of nightcrawler and uatu so basically plus two across the board is pretty huge that's a ton of value especially when you consider that spectrum is a six five as she is already and then you add the two across the board for all those ongoing cards it's pretty significant and a lot of players may not actually do the math to expect spectrum coming down and then you have the second win condition which is kind of like the head games style uh, win condition especially when you consider what namor does namor who looks a lot like Cristiano Ronaldo, basically has a plus five power if it's the only card there. So this is where the macro consideration of the game comes into play. You generally want to play Namor into the right lane if possible, and at the very least into the center lane, because you want to keep him by himself. You want that 410. Remember, it becomes a 412 when hit by Spectrum. Moreover, if you use Claw, this is your second win condition, you can use Claw, which impacts one of the right lanes, so you have to play him either left or mid, for an additional plus six. Moreover, you can hit Claw with Spectrum, or you can play Onslaught onto the Claw and actually put plus 12 into the lane to the right, which is absolutely insane. So that is your second win condition, and again, much more of like a head game style play. Regardless of that, if you don't have Punisher, uh, which you should, but you uh, you can use Captain America if you prefer, that's A-OK. -okay. I think Punisher's better for Pool 1, because you're facing a lot of the Kazoo decks. And then you have Mr. Fantastic, which once again, when uh, you know put in the same lane as Claw, gives you significant reach with Onslaught. Right, so you want to play, you know, Claw and uh, Mr. Fantastic mid with Onslaught into mid as well. You generally will probably win mid because that's a lot of value. But then you're getting plus four to either adjacent locations, and you're getting plus twelve to the right, which is insane, right? And then you have obviously Lizard, which is a very good tempo card. Uh, his ongoing is a negative ongoing. In fact, if someone fills a lane against him, which is common against uh, Zoo decks, he does take a negative three. But with with the um, the impact of Spectrum, he ultimately becomes a two four, which is okay. It's not that big. A deal. Uh, Colossus is better than Lizard in the at this stage of the game, but you 
kind of short on ongoing cards. Colossus is very durable, allows you to play in lanes that might have destruction mechanics, and obviously becomes a 2-5. Uh, Uatu and Nightcrawler are just simply value, gives you additional reach, lets you know about the locations, and Ant-Man's an ongoing card that's simply just very good as a one drop. This deck overall is extremely complex to play, but as long as you keep Norborn by themselves and you play uh, Mr. Fantastic and Claw in conjunction with Onslaught, you'll find yourself winning a ton of games. As we enter Pool 2, it's worth noting that a lot of people like playing Disrupt decks. And while I think the Disrupt decks really take off in Pool 3, the Pool 2 variant is actually still extremely satisfying to play, and actually has some similarities to the deck we just spoke about with our ongoing list and its finisher. Regardless, let's talk about it. First of all, in Pool 2 you get Iceman, who's a wonderful disruption card. The plus one cost to an opponent's card in their hand is absolutely infuriating. If you don't have Iceman yet, you can use Korg, but but honestly, Iceman is absolutely fantastic. There could be the argument that Cable is not even really a disruption card. Yes, pulling the opponent's bottom card into your hand is valuable as for information, but it was unlikely they were going to play that anyways. Regardless, I do think that Cable is an interesting and fascinating addition to this deck. Uh, Scorpion is a god tier disruption card. Nothing is more infuriating than getting hit by Scorpion. The negative one across the hand is super huge. One can make the argument that like, if they have a pretty legit hand, Scorpion is basically like a 2-5, two, 2-6, two, depending on how many cards they hit. It's a pretty wild value. Scarlet Witch is great because, again, you want to have a, some control disruption elements here, so if there is an unfavorable location, you can get rid of it with Scarlet Witch. Uh, Lizard isn't necessarily a good disruption card, but as you move into Pool 2, there's going to be less Zoo-style mechanics mechanics and more focus on individual larger units like in dino decks. So basically the advantage of Lizard is it's less likely that they zoo up against you and you just have a lot of additional value. Cosmo is a core component to, to disruption. Uh, there's going to be uh, quite a few decks that do rely on like Odin combos and Odin synergies and Cosmo will destroy those completely. Killmonger is fantastic. The only one drop you have in this deck is in fact Iceman, and Iceman's effect is long-lasting in the opponent's hand, so wiping out Iceman isn't that big a deal. A hard counter to any Zoo-style deck. Now, again, you want to disrupt hands, so using Sandman to disrupt hands is absolutely fantastic. Sandman can be hit and miss, for the reason that if you're playing a lot of uh, de uh, Devil Dinosaur decks, they don't necessarily need to play too many cards, so Sandman can be a bit tricky. If you find yourself playing a lot of Sandman decks, sorry, not Sandman decks, Dino decks, remove Sandman and add Enchantment. Enchantress, that would be the modification that's worth playing. If you're playing a lot against, uh, you know, zoo style decks and other types of decks, even disruption decks, Sandman can be absolutely fantastic. But again, if you're seeing lots of Devil Dinosaur, consider subbing out the Sandman for Enchantress. She would be a good decision. From there, we have a couple different options how we finish this game. We have the Iron Man finish classic with uh, America Chavez. It's an 18 power swing, uh, just on two cards. It's a lot, and it also benefits any other uh, lane as well. Uh, by any other lane, any other card. In the lane is what I meant to say. And then you have the additional play of Onslaught into Iron Man. Remember, Onslaught's going to double the ongoing effect of Iron Man, which is on, which is doubling the impact that Onslaught has from a uh, energy standpoint. So it's a really huge play. Realistically, if you have Onslaught, you'd prefer to play Onslaught into Iron Man as opposed to Chavez over Iron Man. But because we only have one one drop and a few two drops here, you really want to make sure that those uh, that your kind of deck is uh, thinned out. So America Chavez allows you to do that and pull these more consistently. You also have the claw uh, gameplay disruption mechanic where you play claw on the left or the mid and then you basically pump additional power in with onslaught to a plus 12 onto the right location for a surprise hit so there's a lot of different ways to finish the game i personally like the onslaught into the iron man or onslaught into claw i find myself rarely playing chavez you could actually cut chavez out of this list if you wished and wanted to add an additional card in here as well if i was adding an additional card i'd add uh, if i take out chavez for instance again what i would do is i would add enchant she would be the ideal play here in my opinion so it all depends on what you want to do this is a good list as well if you find it consistent enough uh, but again your uh, gameplay experimentation will determine what you're most comfortable with as you enter pool 2 you get some more options for movement decks namely you get cloak and you also get vulture both of which are pretty damn solid in movement decks. Moreover, it's important to understand that when designing a movement deck, you want to make as much value as possible. And in, as you move into pool two, Killmonger becomes extremely valuable as you start to delete sunspots and you kind of mess up a lot of the, the zoo decks that might be in the higher echelons of pool one. But regardless, what you want to do is you want to create a situation where you have multiple men on the board, hit up with, with the Hulkbuster, and then basically proc your Nova 
with your Killmonger. So basically what you do is when you play Killmonger, you destroy Nova and you apply that the Nova buff, which is the plus one across the board, to all your individual units, which is absolutely wild. Especially when you consider that someone like Multiple Man takes that plus one and replicates it as they move with the Heimdall, which is an absolutely beautiful play. Uh, obviously, Miles Morales is more on the paid side of, uh, of this list here, so if you did not buy the Battle Pass, you will have to substitute Miles Morales. However, what's important to know here maybe thinking, Alex you're killing the iron fist with your killmonger but that's not that big a deal because usually with this deck you kind of lack space the iron fist allows you to proc the multiple man and then allows you to basically create additional space by using killmonger which is fine because you have a lot of ways to create a lot of additional value as well in pool two you want to counter for your uh, devil dinosaurs and your kazoo style decks enchantress allows that if you are seeing more dino decks i actually like shang chi a little more but it's up to you as to what you're seeing so you can substitute enchantress for Shang Chi. Uh, with regards to the general finishing, you want to make sure that you're positioning everyone in a way that allows you to Heimdall on turn six and make the biggest value play possible. By the way, if you don't have uh, Miles Morales, you could consider putting someone like Chavez here to improve the draw rate of your other cards. Regardless, it's important that you understand that when moving, uh, creating move decks, sorry, it's it's incredibly uh, you know important that you consider the macro scenario of your gameplay. You want to make sure that you know as Heimdall moves people to the left, if you have someone like Craven pinned on the left, he can't move and he'll actually be buffed as he moves with others as well. So Craven's often best played in the middle and then pushed alongside with three others so that Craven can get run up in value. Regardless, move decks are a lot of fun and the Killmonger Nova combination into Multiple Man and the others here could be an absolutely fantastic combination. For those that are beginning to enter Pool 3, there are a few decks as exciting to play as the Lockjaw combo decks. They are absolutely one of my favorite decks to play and you'll be seeing them featured on this channel quite a bit. But regardless, if you're entering pool 3 and you have Lockjaw, here's an example of how you can play this particular deck. Basically, Lockjaw is the core card here. When you play a card into Lockjaw, it gets swapped with a card in your deck. So what you want is you want some cards that are, you know, relatively inexpensive that you can feed into Lockjaw, which is why you have Wasp. A zero cost one, basically on three, you can play Lockjaw and Wasp at the same time and immediately pull someone from your desk deck, sorry, which is valuable because it reduces the chances that you draw them on the next turn on four, right? Because you don't want to draw these guys. You want to pull them for free unless you draw them on six of course the nice thing about jane foster is that if you happen to play your uh, your wasp into lockjaw and you play jane foster wasp comes back out to give you a free play back into the lockjaw once again iceman is just a really good disruption card uatu is really nice too because basically sometimes you want to hold a card to play into lockjaw on turn four and you hold the uatu giving you value on the unrevealed locations and then you feed them to the lockjaw black widow is awesome because you basically cycle black widow into the lockjaw and pump a widow bite in now at two mana um Black Widow is a little on the expensive side to feed to Lockjaw, so bear that in mind. She is an easy cut if you are out of space in this deck or you don't have her, which is fine. Thor is great because you can feed the Mjolnir into Lockjaw and still get the buff to Thor. And then obviously the Lockjaw Jubilee combination is absolutely wild because basically Jubilee pulls a card in and then gets pulled in herself and brings another card in. It's absolutely incredible. And finally, the cards that you're targeting are Doctor Doom. The Doom bots are absolutely fantastic. They give you additional reach. They help you get into uh, locations you might not be able to get into and it's just an amazing pull odin's fantastic as well because if you put it on top of the dr doom you end up putting out more doom bots uh america chavez is an absolute requirement because you want to pull lockjaw early and america chavez is a consistent uh target for both Jubilee and Lockjaw because it remains in the deck. And finally Magneto, a fantastic card to pull from either Jubilee or from Lockjaw but gives you a huge ability to disrupt in a big sit turn 6 play. Regardless guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Watch the uh, the previous video down below if you uh, want to see other decks. We cover these every week so if you uh, saw decks here that you think are very interesting, maybe you'll find uh, the, the, uh, the decks from the last week, sorry, even more interesting. We'll see you in the next Marvel Snap video.